Hi, this is Kevin Trainer, and I'd like to welcome you to my tutorial demo. Uh, this one's associated with uh, Chapter 10 of the Reggie's and Step uh, Java book, uh, and it's going to cover both uh, um, interfaces, which uh, are left over from Chapter 9, and array lists which are more formally a part of chapter 10. I've already done a previous uh, tutorial demo um, on uh, that is an overview of this uh, uh, set of exercises. I've, I've, uh, we've made some changes to our transportation class model and I've already implemented a lot of the changes and in, in the overview, I go over them. So if you haven't reviewed that yet, then you're gonna to wanna to do that. And then we'll pause here and wait for you to come back, okay? Okay, we're back. So in that, um, in that overview, I uh, give you a hint ahead of time that um, we had uh, two more groups of things to do. Um, one group we're going to be done associated with snowmobile. Okay, and um, we were going to implement the resource chargeable interface, which is what allows snowmobile to appear to be uh, worthy of a resource charge. Um, we were going to provide an implementation for the method that makes up the interface, determine resource charge amount. We're going to put that into Snowmobile. And then um, we're going to change the Snowmobile test to make sure that that works. Uh, we're going to also go to the the array list based uh, test data source and we're going to make sure that we've got snowmobiles added to that in fact we're going to do that uh, first and then we're going to do some testing there as well and finally we're going to go to the billing client and we're going to um, we're going to add the charging line there for um, vehicles that are resource chargeable at this point that's only snowmobiles but that could change in the future and that's why we're using this um, more generalized more elegant approach okay and um and then uh i'm going to leave it for you to do the same thing for boat okay and uh while i'm doing this i'm kind of testing out the instructions for your assignment with boat so, um, here goes. So, the first thing that we're going to do here is I have accidentally made this thing too big. So, uh, if you'll excuse me, I have to... Uh, I have to get this thing back in its proper window. Okay. Uh, so let me shrink the, uh, the diagram. And I think uh, we've gotten ourselves out of uh, formatting problems there. All right. So uh, here we are. So um, item number one. Uh, on the list of things to do in the, in the assignment instruction is to go to array list best based test data source and and, and add some test uh, data I'm going to do mine for uh, snowmobile you're going to do yours for boat so let's find um, array list based vehicle test data source and let's get a look at it and we'll see that um, the lines that have to do with uh, boats are com commented out and the lines that have to do with snowmobiles are commented out 
uh, let's go and uh, make the changes that we need to. Okay, so um, I'm going to do the snowmobile stuff. All right. And let's just uncomment what's here. This is going to uh, generate a lot of errors. So uncomment it, toggle the comments off. Okay, and now that vehicles is not an array anymore like it was in the code that this uh, originally came from, well, then it doesn't like the fact that we're trying to use those square brackets and all. Okay, well, what are we going to do? We're, we're going to do the same thing as we did for car and motorcycle we're going to call vehicles.add okay so let's get started with that we're going to want to um, say vehicles.add okay and uh, then we're going to want to add whatever is appropriate to add right and there are going to be five snowmobiles so let's Copy this. Yeah, so we've got five of them. One, two, three, four, and five. Okay. And it's okay to just uh, take the code um, uh, here where we construct a snowmobile. That hasn't changed. Okay. So we're going to ask for a new snowmobile. We don't want to pick up that semicolon there. So I'm going to do a cut, and I'm going to paste it over top of that little E with it. It's my place uh, keeper, and there it goes. And now I'm going to do it for my second uh, snowmobile. And again, we want to make sure we get enough code, but we don't want to take the semicolon. So now we got two snowmobiles constructed. And cut and paste this. Then we'll have three snowmobiles done. And now we've got four snowmobiles done. And five okay so there we go so we've constructed five snowmobiles and we have added them to the array list with uh, a call to the add uh, method and that's all we need to do okay so that's going to be just fine and of course i've done my part and when you get this you're going to do yours you'll do yours for boats okay so that compiles just fine everything's looking good so i'm going back to my instructions and i see that number two um, is there's a test class associated with this array list based test data source and I want to update that test. So here it is down here. All right. So um, <clears throat> this is good. How are we going to do this? Well, we've got snowmobiles. OK, and we're expecting five snowmobiles, but that's all commented out. Okay. We're not expecting the boats yet. That's only going to happen when you um, add those. But we can take these five snowmobiles, and take them out of comments, and our test class ought to work just fine, just like this. And it did run. Okay. Now, if you want to be a stickler here, I always say you ought to uh, force... A failure right so we can force the failure to make sure that we're actually running this test right okay so we forced the failure and now we'll get that out of there and we can see yeah we're really running the test everything's fine okay that's great <clears throat> so we've done uh, items one and two and item three has to do with the code in the billing client. Um, 
I've been there before, but you haven't. Okay, so let's look at the billing client. Okay. And uh, when I say that you haven't, I mean you haven't made changes to this yet. Um, we have uh, seen the code in my overview demo. Okay, and uh, let's say run the billing client class to demonstrate that it properly displays all test data, including the newly added, and in my case, this is going to be snowmobiles. In your cases, it will be boats. Okay, so it should run as is. Let's give it a run. And let's see what we've got. Well, we've got five cars, five motorcycles, and five snowmobiles. And they seem to be all coming out right. We haven't we haven't really added any code yet to generate um, additional fees. Okay, so we just wanted to make sure that we could use the data source. And the data source seems to be doing just what we want. Okay, so we're going to say bye to this for a little while, but we'll be back when we, we add the um, resource uh, chargeable uh, stuff. Okay, so now in my assignment instructions, I'm up to number four, uh, create the interface. In my case, the interface I'm going to uh, create is going to be um, resource chargeable. In your case, it's going to be luxury taxable. So how do we do that? Well, first of all, I don't really have too many tabs open. So I'm going to go up and do a file uh, close all just because I can. And I want to add a, um, I want to add an interface with my uh, source code. So it's going to go right in the package that all the other classes are in, net.ligent.students.transportation. Okay. And I want a new interface. It's got a little purple sub icon there. Okay. And it's going to be called um, the name of the method, which is resource chargeable. Okay. And do we want to generate anything? Nope. Just uh, finish. Okay. And, okay, resource chargeable has a single method, and it is um determine resource charge amount okay so we're going to say public right what do we return double determine resource charge amount sorry amount no arguments. End of story. So uh, these interface files can be very uh, simple, but they're very important. And remember that they create an obligation for uh, classes that claim to implement the interface. And the obligation is they have to provide an implementation of the methods that are in the interface. Again, we only have one, determine resource charge amount. Okay. All right. So let's go down to snowmobile. Okay. Oh, I'm sorry. We have to stay with our instructions because we're testing them out. So uh, uh, number five, in my case, this is going to be modify the snowmobile class. In your case, you're going to be doing the boat class. So I'm going to find the snowmobile class. OK. And I have to say that it implements an interface. So you can both extend a super class and implement an interface. And you typically do them in that order. So extends vehicle implements um, resource 
charge oh, capital C for chargeable charge a ball okay everything's fine okay kind of fine okay no problem with the name of the interface but what happens here we're getting the complaint add unimplemented methods because as soon as we claimed that we implemented the interface we needed to implement the method well what the heck let's tell it to add the unimplemented method oh let's try it again chasing it all over okay so we added that so typically it puts it at the end now i've talked about this before uh, when we were providing an implementation for an abstract method in a super class uh, we use the annotation override we can use the annotation override to um, to tag uh, these method implementation to say i'm trying to provide an implementation for a method that i'm required to implement okay um and even though it's not technically an override i wish they had another uh, annotation like implements or uh, something like that but we don't um we we just reuse this annotation that we use when we're trying to overlie, override a method in a superclass. But that's what we get. So we get that. And uh, so we got that for free. Uh, that's kind of a nice to have. Okay. So um, uh, in your case, under number five you got these beautiful specifications about the length of the boat and feet and the luxury tax amount that applies in my case i wasn't so kind so i've got to figure out what i'm doing here okay and the easiest thing for me to do is to do it um based on um uh, engine displacement in cc's okay so uh let's uh do this okay so let's say uh that the answer um is the highest amount that it could be so first of all it's a double and the highest amount that i'd like this to be is uh eh, maybe two hundred dollars so double answer equals uh, $200 okay so let's say that if it's less than uh, 750 cc's that it's um, that you don't pay no let's say if it's less than 500 cc's you don't pay anything at all okay so let's do this so we say if no oh, sorry let's get this now this is a question of sort of efficiency and maintainability of code but uh, how do we get the ancient displacement in cc's well we call the getter could we call it several times yeah we could call it s several times but it's probably better form to define a local variable and just retrieve it once so I'm going to say int uh, displacement equals uh, get engine dipl engine displacement in cc's. Okay, so I got the displacement. Okay, and I'm going to say if displacement uh, is less than 500 we're not going to charge him anything at all so we're going to say answer equals 0, 0.00 okay and we're going to do the same kind of thing we've done in all these we're just going to do uh, a series of else ifs so we're going to say else if displacement 
um, is less than mm, let's say 750 okay then uh, the answer is equal to 50 charge him $50 Okay, and then uh, displacements misspelled. Still misspelled. Displacement. That's better. And let's say if it's less than a thousand, else if displacement is less than a thousand. Let's put a space up in that 750 line so that looks better. Uh, let's say it's a hundred. A hundred dollars. All right. And then the next break point, we have one more break point else if uh, displacement uh, is less than 1,200. So between 1,000 and 1,200, it's going to be uh, 150. I think my rationale here is that the bigger they are, the more noise they make. So we're going to get a lot of complaints. We're going to have to answer the phone a lot, and it's going to cost us real money. And, or, uh, and that's it. Okay? So what's going to happen is if it's 1,200 or larger, what's it going to get? Well, it's going to get this 200. Okay? So less than... 500, 0, less than 750, 50, less than 1,000, 100, less than 1,200, 150, and then everything else is 200. Okay? And is this uh, charging too much? Yeah, it probably is. But um, it's only, you know, we're only playing, right? Uh, so return answer. All right. Okay. So I believe I'm at the end of my instruction number five. Okay. I have provided an implementation for determined resource charge amount. And that's it. So now... I need to go to instruction number six. And instruction number six says, um, go to the test class for what you just changed and uh, provide appropriate uh, test cases. So in, in my clay case, I'm going to go work on um, snowmobile test. In your case, you're going to go work on uh, boat test. So let's go find snowmobile test. There it is. So typically what I would do the first time I bring up a test is I'll run it to make sure it's passing. Well, it's passing okay. So if I'm starting out with a broken test, I'd like to know it. All right. So then let's go down to the bottom. And let's try to uh, create the proper... Uh, tests for um, resource uh, charge. So let's just take uh, this uh, test for annual registration fee. Okay. And let's clone it. So I've got a lot of extra lines here. I'm going to clone it. Okay. Um, and this is going to be uh, resource charge amount 
determine resource charge amount. And I don't want to do 1,200 cc's. Now, what are my test cases? Well, something we've kind of talked about, but not really talked about uh, explicitly, is an approach that we call boundary value testing. Okay? So we've got some boundaries in which the rules uh, change for resource charge amount. And, and where we typically get errors is right at the boundary. Now, how do we typically make those coding errors? Well, we use an equal instead of, uh, you know, we use a less than rather than a less than or equal to. Okay, so we have these off by one kinds of problems at the boundary. And this is a very common place to uh, have these accidental, uh, these accidental errors. Okay, so then how can we, um, how can we figure what this, is, what we need for test cases? Well, let's just look at snowmobile. Look at the implementation. Okay, the first of the breakpoints is at five hundred. Okay, so to me, that means I need a test case on either side of the boundary. I need a test case for four ninety nine. I need a test case for five hundred. Okay. Let's see that happen. So let's have one for 499 cc's. Oh, not 49.99, but 499 cc's. Okay. Let's actually make it 499 cc's. Okay. Uh, let's have an expected resource charge amount. And less than 500, it should be zero. So let's say we're expecting zero. Okay. And then um, we have, uh, we want to compare not expected annual race registration fee, but expected resource charge amount. Okay. And that's it. And remember, since this is a double, I usually say I'll accept problems up to half a penny. OK. Rounding errors. OK, so let's run. Didn't work. So we expected zero. Uh, oh, this is interesting. Expected zero, but was 25. Why? Because we're calling the wrong thing. We're calling the registration fee. Oh, we don't want that. Well, we've proven that we're running the test. So that's, that's a good part. We've already failed it. Determine resource charge amount. Okay. I'll save this. Let's hope that this passes. It does. Okay, very good. So it looks like we're getting the right result for um, 499 cc's. Okay, you remember that the other part of that boundary testing pair was 500. So I'm just going to clone it again. And I'm going to test uh, 500 cc's. And I'm going to change the real data to say 500 cc's. Okay. And I have to remember what we're charging them. And again, I, I don't have written spec for this, which is not good uh, practice. But um, uh, the next break point is uh, $50. So it didn't qualify for zero. It should qualify for 50. So let's say we're expecting to get $50. So let's say 50, zero, zero. Okay. And let's give it a run. And it passed. Okay, so once you're cloning these, they're pretty fast. But remember to force a failure. Okay, so you can prove to yourself that you really are running that test case.
yep, that worked. So fix it, save it, retest it. That's fine. Okay, so four ninety nine and five hundred. Now let's look at the next boundary. Okay, the next boundary is seven fifty. So we need um, seven forty nine and seven fifty. So let's do that. Um, so let's create a 749. Seven forty nine. Okay. It's still fifty dollars because it's it's at the very other end of this uh charging I I interval so we just have to change the actual data to reflect the name 749 and this should work that should pass and it does and again i know this is seems seems too hard but um there's no alternative to uh, demonstrating that you really are running the test, especially when you're cloning them like this, because you'd be surprised how many times you accidentally forget the annotation. All right. Okay, so 749 is fine. Okay, let's run it again. 750. Uh, that's going to need another amount, but let's just run it with the current amount in order to force the failure anyway. Okay. So 750 cc's. Change the real data to 750 cc's. Okay. That's the wrong amount, so we should be forcing a failure there. Okay. Expected 50, but was, and let's go across and see, but was 100. So does it go to 100 at 750? Let's look. Um, yeah, if it's, if it's 750 or greater and less than 1,000, it goes to 100. Okay. So let's go back and say we're expecting 100. We know that we're getting 100, so we're going to get a pass, but... Let's uh, prove it to ourselves. Okay, so we've done the second pair of boundary, boundary value test cases. Okay, so where's the next boundary? Well, let's look. Um, it's at a thousand. So we need one. We need a test case for nine ninety nine, and we need a test case uh, for um 1000 very good let's do the 999 one and give us some extra lines here so 999 i know this sounds tedious but it's the only way to properly test it okay so 999 that's the upper bound of the current interval so we need to we need to hmm. I don't know how I did that okay I don't know what I did I'm a little bit worried about my last uh, test case so let's go back to my last uh, test case where I think I changed the wrong value. Change this to, it should have been 750. I changed it to 100 instead of changing this. I think, I think it failed and I just wasn't watching. So let's uh, save it, run it. It did fail. Okay, so let's uh, pay more attention here. 750 cc's and a hundred dollar charge okay all right let's give it a run now that passed okay all right
right. Got to pay full attention here, guys. All right. So, uh, again, we're on to the next one, 999. Okay. So the CC should be 999. Uh, the value should still be 100. We should be at the upper part of the 100 range. So let's put 100 out there. And let's give it a run. We get a pass. And then, of course, let's force a fail. Save that. Give it a run. And just what we expected. Got a failure. So now we're passing again. So we had a 9.99. We need a thousand. Thousand should go up to the next uh, charge level, but let's leave it where it is now because it'll force a failure. If everything's the way we expect, we'll get a uh, failure back. So not 9.99, but a thousand. And then the real data itself should be a thousand. And let's save it and run it. And we we expected 100, but was 150. Now let's go confirm that we're really expecting 150 for a thousand cc bike. Yeah, it's not less than a thousand, so it's not 100. It's 150. So 150 it is. Looks good. Let's give it a run. And that works. Okay. So we've done this next a test pair at 9.99 and a thousand. And let's go look at the next dividing line. Well, it's a 1,200. So we're going to have 11.99 and 1,200. Those are going to be our last two test cases. Okay. So let's do this. Let's do 11.99. So, 11.99, makes sense, put that in for the real value, 11.99, and we're at the upper end of the interval for uh, the $150 fee, so that, that should be okay. So let's give it a run, we're expecting a pass, and we get one, and now let's force a fail. To prove that we're actually running that test case, we get a fail. Very good. And again, I always like to save it and run the test over just to prove that I haven't uh, haven't broken it. So that was 11.99. Oh, that's interesting. I caught it at 11.990s. I didn't want that. So we renamed it. Let's just run it again. That's working fine. And then let's us make our last test case, which is uh, 1,200 cc's. Okay, so we'll put that in the name, 1,200. And we'll put that in the actual data value, 1,200. Okay, and now we're expecting to be at the new value, which is 200, but we have the old amount in here. So this should force a failure. Let's see. Okay, yeah, expected 150, but was, let's hope it says 200. It does. Okay, and again, go back and confirm that it's really 200. Well, everything over, everything 1200 or greater gets the, what we, we, um, initialized answer to. And you know, it would be better if for this, I said 200 and I have an integer expression here. It would be better to say it's 200.00. It did the conversion for me and that was fine, but let's, uh, let's do that. 
So we're expecting it to be 200. And then let's come back here. We had a fail already. Let's change this to 200. OK, save it and give it a test. OK, so we had a bunch of pairs. Typically, if you've got something like this and you've got um, you've got one, two, three, four boundaries, then you're going to need two times that many test uh, cases. OK, you're going to need one right below, one right above. OK, so we should have eight. Let's look back. We've got uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. How about that? OK, and I, I know it seems like a lot of work, but this is what you really have to do if you really want to test that code. Uh, you need to take this boundary value testing approach. Okay, great. So where are we? We're up through number six. So we're getting close to the end. We've come to the last instruction, number seven. So we want to we want to modify the billing client class so that it checks if each vehicle is an instance of the interface that we're checking for. In my case, I'm going to want to be checking for resource chargeable for my because I want to catch the snowmobiles. In your case, you're going to want to be checking for luxury taxable because you're going to want to catch the boats. OK. All right. So let's go up and find a billing client. OK, uh, so we have some code here where we pick out the annual registration fee and we print that out. We have some code here where we pick out the the where we print out the total amount due. OK, uh, let's put some code in between where we're going to put the resource uh, chargeable. OK, so um, we're just going to call it resource chargeable amount. OK, so again, it's good form to just uh, fetch the um, just uh, calculate the fee one time. So let's we have double uh, resource charge amount equals and then let's take uh, the current v which is current vehicle current v um uh, dot uh, determine uh, oh that's not going to work and uh, that's not going to work at all <laughs> okay hang on to that we'll be back there in a minute OK, we can only do this if we have a resource chargeable. And then we're going to have to cast it as a resource chargeable. OK, so the first thing we do, check if we have a resource uh, chargeable. So we say if current vehicle, current V instance of all one word, lowercase, because it's an operator. OK, resource chargeable, just have the name of the interface. So if it is, then we're going to do the code inside. OK, so the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to uh, declare a resource chargeable. And let's call it uh, uh, chargeable equals, how do we do this? We cast 
the current V as a resource uh, chargeable. Okay. Do we know that that's a safe thing to do? Sure we do, because we just tested it. Okay. So we know we can cast it as a resource uh, chargeable because we because it is an instance of resource uh, chargeable. So in parentheses, we cast resource chargeable. Okay. Um, and then what do we cast? We cast current V. Okay. So now I've got something called chargeable, okay, uh, which is holding the reference to the chargeable vehicle. And let's move that code that I got a little too eager with a minute ago. Okay, so resource charge amount is not current V. We're going to say chargeable dot determine resource charge amount. Okay, so again, could we call this method a number of times? Yeah, we could. Probably not good form though. So we save the amount, okay? Now we need to do two things with the amount, okay? We need to both print it out and add it to the total. Now how did we do it up on the registration fee? So first we added it, then we printed it. Let's just try to clone this code. This looks like a good two lines of code. If we can clone this, it's going to do just the job we want it to do. Okay, so total amount this vehicle equals that. Well, no, we already have something, so we want to add to it. So we want to say plus equals. Okay, we want to add to what we already have in there. We don't want to start all over again, right? And then what is this called? Well, this is called resource charge amount. Okay, so now we've added that in, in the total. Okay, and now instead of printing out the annual registration fee, we want to print out the uh, resource charge, resource charge amount. Okay. And what I'm seeing is that the, um, it's a little bit hard to know if these are going to line up. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to print them and then I'm, I'm going to decide. Okay. So let's do that. Okay, and then I, I've got the total amount due right here. Get rid of the extra things. So my question is, uh, <clears throat> are these going to line up right? And it's just as easy to print them and then adjust them. Okay, so let's run the program. Looks like they're off by a little bit. Okay. So it looks like the uh, resource charge amount could have one more uh, could have one more space in it before the colon. Okay, let's just look. One more space. Resource charge amount space colon. That should do it. Looks like they line up pretty nicely. So let's see. Um, so um, now this is interesting because I'm not getting the right answers. <laughs> uh, don't you love that? Uh, oh. I know I'm not getting the right answers because I am not calling the right thing. Because in this second one, what am I calling? I'm calling uh, um, no. 
That's not it. Resource charge amount. Total amount this vehicle plus resource charge amount. Don't you love this? Well, I am going to put you on hold while I find out the error of my ways. I'll be right back and I'll be a lot smarter. Found it. It's a cloning error. When I cloned this print line, I said to print the annual registration fee. Oops, that's not what I want on this line. I want the resource charge amount. Okay, so let's save that. And let's run that. And let's make sure we're getting good things out of this uh, client code. So we, we have the decimal points aligned, so that's fine. Okay, now it's the last five of these that um, uh, have potential resource charge amounts, the snowmobiles. Okay. So uh, 200 and 125, that's 325. 25 and 0, it's 25. I'm not sure I really want to see that 0. Okay, I'm thinking that maybe if there's no resource charge amount, I don't even want to say that there is one. The other guys, 125 and 200, that adds up. 75 and 100, that adds up. 25 and 50, that adds up. Okay, so I just want to suppress this line. Okay. Let's go see if we can do that. How could we do that? Well, we could do the following thing. We could take this thing where we add to um, the total vehicle amount and we print out the line. Let's just uh, enclose them in an if. So I highlight the two lines, surround with uh, if statement. And what if I say if resource charge amount greater than 0 0.00, then I want to do it. If there's a resource uh, charge amount, if not, well, I don't want to do it. Okay, so let's run that. And now let's look for the um the little one the pipsqueak the antarctic pipsqueak um it's only got 350 cc's it's less than 500 so it's not charged any resource charge amount so we don't even have the line for it okay um and whether you're going to have a line that says zero and whether or you're going to uh, suppress that line it's really a question for the users. I could see it either way, but I, I, I kind of like it like this. So that's what we've done. Okay, so um, the end of number seven, when finished, run this class and inspect the output to confirm that everything has been charged appropriately. Now we didn't get exactly what we expected and uh, we changed uh, two things. So we really are testing. There's still testing to be done. We're testing how to use the client. And so we made uh, two changes. We weren't able to JUnit test it because the code's in a main, but we were, we were able to do this kind of classic uh, testing by inspection. Um, so it's up to you now, okay? Um, I will be publishing a copy of the instructions for you and a copy of the uh, version 5 transportation class model diagram. So you can refer to that as you go. And I am going to be providing this uh, project that I've been working in, which is called... Uh, uh, chapter 10 uh, demo 
and you're going to use that as your starting point for your chapter 10 coding assignment. So it's all up to you. Uh, best of luck, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.